Hey guys, it's Lauren. For today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to execute a couple transitions that are part of the warpy editing style. All right, enough said, let's get into it. So first we have this fisheye zoom out with Turb. It's been super popular lately, but I know a lot of people aren't sure how to execute that really smooth warp. So of course, I'm here to show you. So I'm just using one clip for this. And your first step is to create a simple zoom out transition. Now I know all of my lovely subscribers already know how to do this, so I'm just going to add a zoom out preset. Next, we're going to add an effect called Turbulent Displace to our clip. For this, you're just going to copy all of my settings. At the very beginning, keyframe the amount and change it to around 40. Hit O on your keyboard to go to the end of the clip and change the amount to 5. Then change the size to 400. And for this next part, it all depends on what specific picture you're using. You wanna move this dot in the middle to a different part of your picture, but this will look different depending on the picture that you have. So for example, when I move the dot to the left for this picture specifically, it looks really weird. But if I was using a different picture, this dot may actually look really good here. For my clip specifically, I'm gonna put my dot over here because again, it's just best for this specific picture. Also, if you don't have this dot to move around, you can just manipulate the offset turbulence values. So I like my turb just like this, but if you're not happy with the configuration of your turb, you can always change the evolution. Once that's done, you're gonna pre-compose your clip. To do so, you're gonna right click on it and click on pre-compose and make sure you're clicked on this circle and this square. Once you've pre-composed your clip, make sure to re-enable motion blur on it. Then in effects and presets, look up warp. You're gonna use the warp that's under distort and just drag it onto your clip and change the warp style from arc to fisheye. At the very beginning, add a keyframe for bend and make it around negative 80. Go to the end of your clip and bring your bend back to zero. Then hit U on your keyboard to view these keyframes. Highlight both of them, right click on one of them, then go to keyframe assistant, easy ease, then head on over to your graph editor. For this, I'm gonna be using speed graph, so just follow my graph. You wanna make an exponential curve, but not super tight. It should be a little bit soft. And this is what it should look like. This next transition is what I refer to as the recoil bounce because the fisheye warp has a little bit of a recoil to it. So for this, you're gonna need two clips and you want them on your timeline like this. In effects and presets, look up warp. This is gonna be the same warp that we just used for our last transition and add it to your first clip. Again, change the warp style from arc to fisheye. Then drag your time indicator towards the beginning of the clip. Add a keyframe for bend and make it zero. Then at the end of your clip, change the bend to around negative 70. Easy use these keyframes and go to your graph editor. Again, I'm going to be using speed graph for this. Right now, I'm just pulling this knob up a little bit so that it inflates before it deflates. It should look something like this. Now we're also gonna add warp to our second clip. Of course, we're gonna change the warp style from arc to fisheye. Now, at the very beginning, add a keyframe for bend and make it 70. Move your time indicator forward three frames and add another bend keyframe at negative 40. Then move your time indicator forward seven frames and change your bend to positive 15. And lastly, move your time indicator forward another seven frames. And finally, bring your bend back to zero. Hit U on your keyboard to view these keyframes and easy ease them. And for a smoother effect, what I like to do is click on the first keyframe and drag it to the left by one frame. Now, pre-compose your second clip. After pre-composing it, make sure to re-enable Motion Blur, and we're gonna add an effect called Motion Tile to this clip. Change the output width and height to 250, and I encourage that you add some mirror edges. So to give this recoil a nicer effect, we are going to do a vertical shake. If you already know how to do a vertical shake or already have your own preset, then just add that to this clip. But I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I like to do my vertical shake. I like to use position in transform, so just hit P on your keyboard to go to that. At the very beginning, add a keyframe for position and keep it at its original numbers. Then drag your time indicator forward two frames and you're gonna increase the second position value so that the line that appears on your composition is about this long. For me, this looks like 670, but this might be different for you. Then drag your time indicator forward seven frames. And now you're gonna decrease your second value so that it's a little bit less than the original value. So my original value was 540, so I'm gonna do about 470. Maybe even a little bit more, I settled for 485. Then again, drag your time indicator forward seven frames. And now I'm gonna make the second value a little bit greater than 540 so that it goes down again. 
I'm gonna do around 570. Then just bring your time indicator forward another seven frames and bring your second position value back to its original number. Now easy ease all these keyframes. Now you wanna hit R on your keyboard to go to rotation. At the very beginning, add a keyframe and keep your rotation at zero. Move your time indicator forward about five frames and change the rotation to five degrees. Then move it forward another five frames and change the rotation to negative two. And lastly, move it forward another five frames and bring the rotation back to zero. Just like for position, easy ease these keyframes. Again, these are just my personal preferences when doing a vertical shake, but if you don't like the outcome for your own edit, you can always adjust the spacing of the keyframes. You can move them farther apart or closer together. It all depends on your clip. And this is what it should look like. For our next transition, we're gonna do a scale distort time slice. I love this so much. So for this, you're gonna need two clips and you want them on your timeline like this so that the first clip lasts throughout the duration of the second clip. So what you're first gonna do is click on your second clip and hit S on your keyboard to go to scale. Then click on these little chains to separate the two scale values. At the very beginning, add a keyframe for scale and make your first value zero. Then drag your time indicator to wherever the beat hits in your audio and change your scale to 50. Just for reference, the distance between these two keyframes for me is 10 frames. From this keyframe, drag your time indicator forward three frames and change your first scale value to 125. Then drag your time indicator forward seven frames and change your scale value to 80. Bring your time indicator forward, of course, another seven frames and change your scale to 110. And lastly, drag your time indicator forward, of course, another seven frames and bring your scale back to 100. Then easy ease these keyframes. So you're gonna go to your graph editor, but we're only gonna be manipulating these first two curves. So this long one and this tall skinny one. So I'm gonna push this first curve to the right and this second curve to the left. Just follow my process. This is what it should look like. Now what you wanna do is pre-compose your second clip and we're gonna add an effect called S underscore time slice to it. This is a Sapphire plugin, so if you don't have Sapphire, you won't have this effect. Also, for a little bit of an embellishment, you can add BCC Lens Blur to your first clip. So I use BCC Lens Blur OBS and I just add that in. About right here, I'm gonna add a keyframe for iris scale and make it zero. Then I'm gonna drag my time indicator a little bit past the beginning of our second clip, so like right here, and I'm gonna change the iris scale to 10. And lastly, no keyframes needed, I'm gonna change the gamma to 650. And this is what it should look like. And if you want a bit of a smoother effect, you can click on this button next to Interp Frames and it'll blend the frames together like this. Next, we have a Motion Tile 3D Flip with Turb. For this, you're gonna need two clips and you want them on your timeline like this. And what you first wanna do is pre-compose them together. After pre-composing them, make sure to re-enable Motion Blur. Now we're gonna add Motion Tile to the pre-composed clip and we're gonna change only the output height to 400, not the output width. And we're also not gonna enable mirror edges. Now hit S on your keyboard to go to scale and change the scale to 63. Now make sure to enable 3D on your clip because we're gonna use Y rotation for one part of this transition. So drag your time indicator towards the beginning of your pre-composed clip and add a keyframe for Y rotation at zero. Then drag your time indicator towards the end of the clip and change your Y rotation to negative 180. Now easy ease these keyframes. Now drag your time indicator to where your first keyframe is and switch over to position for the second part of the transition. Keeping the time indicator where it is, add a keyframe for position and keep it like this. Then hit U on your keyboard to see your other keyframes for Y rotation. Line your time indicator up with your second keyframe for Y rotation because we're also gonna put our second position keyframe there and you're gonna decrease the second position value so it goes up. And you should have one square that's right in the center. Easy ease these keyframes as well. Then drag your time indicator to where the very first frame is of your second picture. It's kind of hard to see, but when I double click into my pre-compose layer, you can see it's the beginning of my second picture. Highlight both sets of your keyframes and go to your graph editor. And we are gonna make two mid graphs for this one. These are graphs that have a peak right here in the center where the time indicator is. So just follow my graphs. And here's how the turn should look. 
You can also change the direction of the twist by changing your second Y rotation keyframe from negative 180 to positive 180, and it'll still look great. Now for a little bit extra pizzazz, we are going to add an adjustment layer. And do you guys remember those turb settings that we did in the first transition? Well, I hope you guys have those ready because we're gonna use them again. So I saved mine as an animation preset called Warpy Turb. So all I have to do is add that to the adjustment layer and it's there. So I added it at the beginning of this adjustment layer. And now what I'm going to do is a command D on my keyboard to duplicate this adjustment layer. But I'm going to bring my second adjustment layer to where the start of our second clip is. So right here. So I'm just going to drag it right there so that both clips have some turb. Now in effects and presets, look for an effect called CC light sweep and add that to your first adjustment layer. At the beginning of the adjustment layer, bring your light sweep to the bottom left corner of your clip and add a keyframe for center. Then drag your time indicator towards the end of the clip and drag this light sweep to the top right corner of your clip. And lastly, we're gonna add a light layer. So go up to layer, new, light. Make sure your light type is parallel and press okay. And this is what it should look like. Next, we're gonna do this simple fisheye zoom in. For this, you're just gonna need two clips on your timeline like this. And the first step is just creating a simple zoom in transition. Now I know for a fact you guys already know how to do this, so I'm just going to skip my process of creating it. Okay, so I've created my transition using Blurmo Curves. And our next step is to add warp to both of our clips. Because I use Blurmo Curves for this transition instead of transform, I don't have to pre-compose my clips before adding warp. But if you happen to use scale for this transition, you're going to have to pre-compose both of your clips individually before you can add warp. So I'm just going to add that to both of my clips. Starting with my first clip, I'm going to change the warp style to fisheye. Towards the beginning of the clip, I'm going to add a keyframe for bend and make it zero. Then at the end of my clip, I'm going to change the bend to negative 80. Easy ease these keyframes and follow my speed graph. Now for our second clip, again, we're changing the warp style to fisheye. At the very beginning, make the bend negative 80. Then at the end, bring the bend back to zero. Easy as your keyframes, and again, follow my speed graph. I'm going to drag this knob a little bit below the equator line so that our warp can inflate a little bit before it goes back to normal. And this is what it should look like. And lastly, we are going to do the center slide with page turn. So for this, you're going to need two clips and you want them arranged on your timeline like this. And the first thing we're going to do is duplicate our first clip. We're going to crop this duplicate so that it ends when our second clip starts. And we're just going to do a simple slide down transition between this clip and this clip. This is pretty standard stuff, so I'm just going to speed through this part. The only part I'm gonna walk you through is this one right here, because I recommend dipping your graph down just a little bit so that your position goes up before it goes down. After you've done that, look up Wipe Rectangle in Effects and Presets. This is a Sapphire plugin, so if you don't have it, you can just use your rectangle masking tool to create a square mask in the center of your clip. So I'm just gonna add that to my first clip change the relative width to one and change your wipe percent to 50%. And it should look like this. Now, before we pre-compose our second clip, we are going to add a white solid layer. To this solid layer, add wipe rectangle. Again, change the relative width to one, change your wipe direction from rectangle in to rectangle out and change your wipe percent to around 97 for a nice white border. Crop the length of the white solid so that it is the exact same length as your second clip, and then pre-compose the two together. After pre-composing, make sure to re-enable motion blur on your clip. Now hit S on your keyboard to go to scale. At the very beginning, add a keyframe for scale at 50. Then drag your time indicator towards the middle of the clip and increase your scale value just a little bit. I'm gonna change it to like 65. Go back to the beginning of your clip and hit R on your keyboard to go to rotation. At the very beginning, add a keyframe and keep it at zero degrees. Then again, drag your time indicator towards the middle of your clip and change your rotation to around negative six. Now hit U on your keyboard so you can also view your scale keyframes and easy ease both sets of your keyframes. Then go to your speed graph editor and just follow my process for both of these graphs. We're gonna skew them both to the left.
And now for the cool part, in effects and presets, look up CC page turn and add that to your pre-composed clip. At the very beginning, add a keyframe for fold position and we're gonna drag it so that it's folded like this. Then drag your time indicator towards the middle of your clip and drag your fold position so it's a little bit farther down in the bottom right corner, but it's still folded a little bit. Hit U on your keyboard to view these keyframes and easy ease them. Then head on over to your speed graph and follow my graph. Now for a little extra added motion blur, we are going to add force motion blur to this clip so that the page turn isn't as intense. And just for an added touch of pizzazz, I'm gonna add in my fireworks overlay from my Her The Sun project file so we can put it underneath our second clip. And when you right click and change the blending mode to screen, it gives this really cool effect. And this is what it should look like. I definitely recommend adding this transition with the first transition that we did in this video, which is the zoom out with fisheye warp and turb. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And if there are any other styles that you would like to see me do a tutorial on, just comment them down below. Bye!